There are several ways how to make your own snow, but after building a few snow guns and having my bachelor thesis written about this stuff, in my experience this is one of the easiest ways. All you need is a fine mist of water and compressed air. There are multiple options on how you combine the two. I prefer one of these coating nozzles. This one mixes water and air internally. You can get these for like 25 euros on Amazon or eBay. In snow guns these usually go by the name of nucleator nozzles. My two snow cannons and snow lawns both utilize custom variants of these nozzles with different spray angles and depending on how much snow I want them to make. One of these nucleator nozzles on its own will make you up to 80 liters of snow per hour. To increase it you can add water mist nozzles either for tap water or for a pressure washer and direct them into the mix of the nucleator nozzle. With the pressure washer option you achieve a boatload of snow fairly quickly if, and that's a major if, the temperature provides it. More about that in a minute. Tap water takes some more tinkering to get a lot of snow out of the system, but it's quite convenient. Typically the used conversion from water to snow is 2.3 to 2.5. So 100 liters of water resides in 230 to 250 liters of snow under optimal circumstances. What you definitely need with this approach is a compressor, which in my experience might still be one of the biggest misconceptions about how to make snow. Water particles need about minus 40 degrees Celsius to spontaneously freeze. Now there isn't enough time to get into the science behind it read this paper. This is where nucleators come into play. These basically initiate freezing of water droplets which lets you make snow starting from roughly minus 2 degrees celsius downwards. Compressor wise personally I'm using this Veldinger FK100 Alu Pro. This aluminum compressor is light, portable, fairly silent and powerful enough to operate one of my snowmakers. Bear in mind Weddinger supports me with my snowmaking approach lately but this doesn't influence my opinion on them in any way. They are just making very solid compressors. One of these nozzles takes between 80 and 100 liters of compressed air at 4 bars of pressure. I've put a link to a few suitable compressors into the description below. If you now just leave it as it is or build something around this base setup is up to your imagination and desires. I've developed my snow cannon with a touch display, semi-automatic control, a floodlight, a weather station and a few other add-ons. If you would like to have some inspo feel free to follow me on Instagram or have a look into my latest YouTube video where I showcase my snow making system. Uh, by the way, the info I'm presenting in this video is based off a bunch of science papers I've read for my studies and some years of personal experience in private snowmaking. Even though I would love to, I'm not employed by any industrial snowmaking company, therefore I would never call myself an expert. An important thing to note is that the amount of snow you can make is limited by the environment you are operating in. This is a combination of temperature and humidity. Basically, when water vaporizes, it has a cooling effect. This is key. In snowmaking, you are generally limited by the wet bulb temperature, which is the lowest temperature you can achieve through vaporization. Say that three times. This is how it's calculated. There are also multiple websites which offer calculators and I also have a table sheet on my Discord server where you can check which wet bulb temperature you're currently having based off temperature and humidity. Link to that in the description. According to publicly available figures, current industrial snow cannons are often advised with minus 1 degree Celsius as the starting wet bulb temperature. My 3D printed snow cannon Scardi can start around minus 1.5 with one nozzle ring opened. Even though you have to consider the slightly lower snow output. So these starting temperatures can be transferred into the DIY sector. When you are working with a nucleator nozzle only, I wouldn't be surprised if your starting temperature is even higher than that. All of this explanation just to tell you that if you are putting out too much water, it might not turn into snow, which then diminishes your effective output. The density of the snow just increases until you are left with slush, ice or water. Let's quickly get into some issues you could run into. As this style of snowmaking requires a compressor, these will heat up the air which then cools down again on its way to the snowmaker. This process causes the moisture bound in the air to condensate inside the air hose and potentially freeze. In my experience that's heavily reliant on where you're operating the snow gun and what humidity you have, but once the air hose freezes, snowmaking is usually over. I'm living in one of the wettest areas in Germany and a heating system as well as a water separator could solve the job for me. Also, the air almost waits 10 seconds in this tank before it gets blown out. That's 10 seconds of cooling down because of aluminum's great heat conducting specs, so this compressor also serves as an air cooler. What also helps is using shorter hoses. That's it for today, if you have any questions or want me to dive deeper in a future video, leave a comment below. Also, if you have experience in snowmaking and feel like there's anything to add, tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day, oh, and great next winter most importantly.